it's time for another fountain pen shootout. <laughs> And today we'll be having a look at three pens. Three pens that don't necessarily have a whole lot in common, but someone suggested in my review of the Conan bulk filler that it was too expensive and that the Twisby VAC 700 was cheaper. He was correct, but I thought let's do a comparison between the Conan bulk filler, the Twisby VAC 700, and the Visconti Opera Crystal. Why these three? Well, these two pens share a mechanism, a filling mechanism that's quite similar. First of all, I have separate reviews of all these pens on my channel, so check them out if you if you want more information. I'm going to cover the pens in great depth here. But two of these pens have a similar mechanism where you just open up this bit, you pull it, push it back. This is Visconti's power filler system, right? You put that into the bottle of ink, you push this, and you'll hear a pop. That's when a vacuum is created and ink flies up there. I'll show you that later when I fill the pen. The VAC 700 works with a very similar mechanism um, where you just unscrew this bit, push that back, or actually pull it back, and then what you do, you push it back in, and you create that vacuum, and you hear that pop again, right? Okay. So that's cool. Um, and then there is the Conan bulk filler, which actually doesn't really have a, a vacuum system with a, a pop like that. It creates an explosive vacuum, but this pen does have a fairly interesting uh, filling mechanism that, that I like, where you just unscrew the blind cap and take that piston all the way to the back. You keep screwing, and as you can see, the piston seal just screws in there. Then that, let me see, look at this. Uh, sorry, where, where, where am I? Where am I? Wrong side of the pen. Camera is mirrored. Now you see this little hatch thing going on there, latch thing going on there, I should say. You turn that around, and then you push that back in. Put the pen in the in the ink, push that all the way in. Now when you're done, you screw that latch, which has a technical name that I don't fully understand because I'm not a man an engineer. Push it back in, unscrew that, push that back in, and you're done. Okay. So that's how that pen works. It has an ink reservoir right there, just like the Visconti power filler system. So they have a big ink reservoir, and then a smaller one there. And they're separated by a seal, so when you're flying, you can make sure the ink is drained, and no ink will leak out when there are pressure differences in the cabin, for example. All right, so is it entirely fair to compare these pens? $65, $550, Euros, and this one was $465. Okay, so you're talking about expensive pens versus a much cheaper pen. Does the cheap pen hold up? That's what we're going to see. Size-wise, they're all big pens. The, the, these two are definitely big. Here I got a Lamy Safari, not a small pen by itself, so you can see it's definitely big pens. The Conan bulk filler is a little bit smaller, um, but it's, it's not a tiny pen. It's definitely also bigger. So I thought it was warranted in comparing these two. <coughs> um, that size-wise, weight-wise, the crystal is much heavier than any of the other ones. Um, that's pretty much what I can say as to comparison here. I think it is much more interesting to see how they write side by side. That's what we're going to do. Not entirely fair comparison. We got a titanium nib on the bulk filler, a 1.3 millimeter chromium nib on the stub, uh, a stub on the um, uh, opera crystal, and a medium. Uh, VAC 7, uh, medium nib on the VAC 700, just a regular nib, so it's not entirely fair. Nevertheless, I'm going to do a quick rundown of how to disassemble them, then I'll ink the pens up, and then I'll do a writing sample. I hope that comparison is going to be useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we got our three vacuum type based like thing pens. Let's start with the Twisby VAC 700. Fairly easy to disassemble. I have disassembly line videos on these pens except for the Opera Crystal. Uh, so if you want to see them in more detail, check them out. VAC 700, just unscrew the, the uh, section, then you can unscrew the whole nib unit. This metal ring slides off, rubber O ring, I think it's two of them. Yes, two of them right there. Nib and feed can be pulled out if you want to for extensive cleaning. And uh, we're ready to slide them back in. 
I believe there is a specific bit where the nib goes. Maybe I'm wrong though. Make sure they're pushed in all the way to the back. Slide that metal ring back in place. Screw the section back in place. Done. Now as to this bit, easy to disassemble. You need one of those Twisby wrenches supplied with the pen. Just slide it on there and then you turn and then you can just pull out the whole thing and this is what you can do. You can disassemble that bit but for that you need to make a special tool. Dan from Fountain Pen Geeks has a, a video on that I believe. Um, for me to be honest this is good enough. right? You just put some grease there uh, you may want to clean that rod a little bit and uh, maybe put a little bit of grease on that occasionally um, and that's pretty much it and then this is just a tube which you can flush out that's just the ink reservoir. When you are done push that back in Screw that back in place. Don't over tighten anything. It's plastic. It will crack. Um, screw the section back in place. Maybe add a little bit of silicon grease there. There is a little rubber o-ring just to make sure you got a good seal. Push that back in. Screw that back in. Cap the pan and you're done. All right. Now the conid I'll, I'll do last. Um, the Opera Crystal is a pen that I have not been able to disassemble this power filler unit of. I'm sure it's possible somehow. You see threads there, so that must be possible, but it's it's threaded in tightly. Uh, it's a precious pen. I don't want to fiddle around with it too much. Um, downside to that is that you will get some water in there. It's not really easy to uh, get rid of that. Um, although it is possible, one thing you can disassemble and that can really help in cleaning the pen quickly, I think is that you can unscrew the nib unit. Now, the little trick I'll show you, you can just separate the nib and the feed. Um, that should not be, be too much trouble. Then to reassemble them again, carefully align them. Slide that back on there up to about that point, I would say. You can do a quick check. If you check them out from the top, you see the feed poking out. Clearly you shoved it in there too far. Um, I think this is a a nice alignment for me. Now the thing is, if you look, let me just grab my little torch there. Um, you see that black plastic thing? Well that's a, a buffer um, and that's a pity because that, that makes sure you don't really get access with say a q-tip if you want to add a bit of lubrication or maybe a paper towel if you want to dry up the, the water in there. Um, because that, that just blocks, you know, what I got is this it's a little type of wrench. Um, I got that with this loop which a viewer sent me and it's actually my favorite loop. Um, you can use this to open up the battery compartment of that. You see, so this little key slash wrench, uh, I, can, I got that with the loop. Now it happens to be the case that, I'm not sure why you can see that, there are two grooves. You see one right there and one on the other side of that plastic thing and this just happens to fit. I suppose a big flathead screwdriver could also fit but if I, if I push this in at just a slightly slanted angle I can just unscrew the nib collar you see and that makes your life a whole lot easier because then you have unrestricted access all the way into the barrel which means that you see some water in there now so what I can do is take a tissue roll it up gently slide it in there, turn it around a bit, you'll see a couple of things. I'm pretty obsessive about cleaning my pens but you see that there was quite a lot of ink left. See that? So this is a nice way to clean it, to dry it up a bit. Um, make sure you don't get the tissue so wet that it stays behind there and you could use alligator forceps to get it out but you need to get them probably. Now I just get rid of the ink there and then I just put that back in and you can just use your thumb to screw it in place and then for the last bit you'll have to use your screwdriver or wrench. Clearly it's plastic so be a little careful you don't damage the nib collar because that would ruin the seal and then you are entering a world of pain because then your pen won't function properly anymore. Alright, now we have finally the Conid Bulk Filler Streamline. Um, you can buy two tools for 15 euros along with the pen um, and this one in particular is very useful. So 
first of all you can unscrew the whole section and pull it off little rubber o-ring there for a seal put the pen, the nib on the crook of your finger, put your thumb in the feed and then you can unscrew the whole nib unit uh, notice uh, that there is another rubber, rubber o-ring right there so careful you don't lose it and there's a rubber o-ring right there in there you see don't don't lose that either make sure you don't dislodge that or anything um, the nib and feed if you really want to you can pull them from the nib unit for really extensive cleaning if you've used a, an aggressive ink or something and when you're done you can put them back in there is a slot for the nib so be careful you align that properly and be very careful you push the nib in all the way otherwise it may leak then just sort of fiddle that in there careful about those rubber o-rings screw it back in place nothing needs to be over tightened here it will just screw in place and when it's done it's done make sure you got proper alignment of the nib and fee there I do yep there we go what remains is the barrel now of course you got that very interesting filling system and you may want to take that out, although I mean, in principle, I mean, from this end, if the section is off, you can already gain access to the barrel. But if you've bought your tool, you probably want to use it. Two little holes there, just slide this in. And I'll show you another trick later on. And you just pull this whole thing. You can use your little Allen wrench to lift up those rubber o-rings you can use a, one of those mini screwdrivers there's a little um, uh, what do we call that nut there uh, and an and allen nut I don't know what the English term is this thing goes in there you unscrew it however that's not really recommended by Conid uh, you can if you really want to but they align all of that exactly properly in the factory and you could in principle um, assemble that again in the wrong way and then you will lose your air tightness and if you uh, it will not really hamper your ink flow or, or be an issue with writing then the perfect seal may be gone so if you go flying or something like that then you may uh, leak some ink all right put a bit of silicon grease on that that double ring there if you want uh, and uh, that's pretty much it then you can screw this shut back in place now a little trick you can use for this don't over tighten anything is just get that wrench in place then screw the cap or the end cap back in place that way you got a nice good grip on it you see it's easier to just put that in screw it out again screw it on there again there we go and just undo your cap it's nice and tight don't over tighten it as I said you know it is plastic and there we go screw the section back in place last bit is a little uh, tough to get in because of that rubber o-ring right you have to screw along with that right well I think we have to ink us up some pens and we're going to look at ink capacity I'm going to get this to empty out my vial this is my, my just a sample vial, six milliliters. None of these pens are going to hold six milliliters, but we're going to have it try to see what we can do. There is no cheating. Just going to fill the pens the way they were supposed to be filled. Make sure the section is completely submerged. Usually do that a couple of times. I'm going to do it three times with every pen. And we have a fixed amount. And yes, the feed is primed now, so I'll just gently wipe it off. This is the amount of ink I get in the um, VAC 700. Let me just grab my torch again. It is typical Dutch, slightly rainy weather. Um, not really sure how you can see that, but the ink level is up to about that point. And up to about that point means that we have... What I get here is just under 
two milliliters of ink. I would say I got about 1.7 uh, milliliters of ink, which is not bad at all. And I'll just do a quick refill of that pen. There we go. Opera Crystal. One thing I'm going to do first is take my sample vial and just roll a tissue around. No leftover inks, ink drops, just a little bit, but I mean, you know, that will not make a difference. Okay, so we had about 1.7, 1.8 for the VAC 700. Let's see what we got in the crystal power filler. I think that's what we can reasonably get out of it. Um, let me see, this is about, I would say, 2.5, 2.6 milliliters of ink. Pull that back in there. Just do a quick fill. There we go. Okay. Cap that pen. And make sure we got as much as we can from that vial. And then we go with the Conid Bulk Filler. One, two, three. And I wipe it off. Let's see what we got us there. And what we have here is, let me see, that's just a little over 2 milliliters, I would say 2.1, 2.2 milliliters. Not sure whether, no, just nib, it's just a little too big to fill it from the vial. Pour that back in. And there we go. And there we go. All right, pens inked up. Time for a writing sample. Okay, three-way vacuum type pen shoot out. Here we have the Twisby Vac 700. The nib is medium and the quick brown fox went for some chili peppers because hey you can't have that freaking animal jump over another freaking animal all the time I've had trouble with pita and all that crap this is that was not really true by the way Visconti Opera Crystal the quick brown fox jumps over the jalapeno alright um, 
this writing with this pen is a little hard to describe. Um, and I, I, I like to, uh, to, to keep things uh, family oriented here, but orgasmic is the word that comes to mind. Now, it's very wet, very smooth, very pleasant to use. Then we have the Conid Book Filler. Nice pen. Bulky tacos. All right. Then we go back to the Twisby. I'm going to open up the air valve, by the way, just to make sure that nobody says, but you didn't open up the air valve, you see. Okay. Um, wetness. I've worked on this nib. It was so dry that it didn't write when I got it. Even when I opened up that valve, all that crap, it just didn't write. And as you can see, it's still pretty dry. Opera Crystal um, is the opposite of that. It's a stub. Alright, by the way, this is a 1.3 millimeter stub. Um, if you use it this way, that goes along with the grind of the nib. You'll see what I mean. I mean, this is a seriously wet nib. And then we have the conid. As you can see, that's another beautiful gusher. Heck, that may even be wetter than the Visconti, and that's saying a lot. Beautiful, lovely pen. Last thing I very much want to show you is the uh, flexibility offered by the nibs. Uh, in the Twisby, not a whole lot. You can squeeze out some line variation. But overall, I would say it's a, a standard nib, standard Bach nib. Not extremely springy, not extremely rigid, something in between. The Opera, in principle, offers almost no line variation. You can squeeze some out, but it's a fairly stiff nib. However, I got that stub on there, so you get this natural line variation. right? So for me it's not really an issue that it doesn't have any spring. Now finally, when it comes to the Conid, I got the nice titanium nib on there, and that thing is a joy to use, uh, which goes from a pretty fine line, and it keeps going and going and going. Do you see any railroading? Do you see any railroading? Do you see the feet drying out? No, because it doesn't. Nice, wet, these weird things, that's just the feed. So, um, the feed actually hits the paper, I can realign the pen a bit. It's beautiful, it's almost like a paintbrush. You get this really nice line variation, and that's what a titanium nib does. Now be careful because you can actually spring a nib. The, the feedback you get from exerting some pressure to exerting too much pressure is almost absent. So at some point you may just spring it, and the nib may end up like that. So be careful, don't overdo it. But you'll develop a feel for that if you use the pen a bit, and you'll get this wonderful line variation. So. If I have to pick favorites, <clears throat> because I know you want to see a winner. Vac 700, definitely the cheapest. I mean, you can have a nice vacuumatic filled pen. It will write, <clears throat> because now they have Jovo nibs. I think that improved the, the dryness significantly. At least that's my experience with the 580 and the Mini. Uh, so that's very good. Um, but of these three, it's not an entirely fair comparison. These two pens are much more expensive than the Twisby. It's a decent pen. It's well made. It's robust. But of these three, it's definitely my least favorite. I love the Opera. You know I love Visconti pens. I'm, I'm honest about that. I, I love them. It's nice. It's big. It's heavy. It's well made. It feels very robust in the hand. But should I pick a daily writer? I'm going to pick the bulk filler. And the reason for that is that just a little less heavy than this monster uh, Visconti. A bit more of a normal size. It's not a big difference uh, pen-wise, just the cap of the Visconti is a bit bigger. Um, 
writes well, writes smoothly, lovely bit of line variation because of the titanium nib that I got, um, holds a lot of ink, nice filling system, which you don't actually use every day, but I mean, I still like that. And I think, you know, this industrial look is not for everyone, I know that, I personally like it, I think it's very cool, and that would be my winner of these three. And yes, that does mean that for once, my Visconti doesn't win, how about that? So I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.